this video we are going to learn about cancer chemotherapy more so pertaining to the oral complications and their management chemotherapeutic drugs are most often infused into the veins that is given intravenously or may even be given orally Pharmacologically speaking, these drugs can be briefly classified as alkylating agents, anti-metabolites, anti-tumor antibiotics, plant alkaloids, steroids, enzymes, nitrosurias, and miscellaneous others. I remember these with the help of this mnemonic. They are either cell cycle dependent or cell cycle independent. Chemotherapy or anti-neoplastic drug therapy may either be given independently or more commonly as an adjunct to surgery or radiation therapy. This largely depends upon the pathology, severity and location of the lesion. Our oral cavity and gastrointestinal tract have high cellular turnover rates, which makes them exceptionally susceptible to the side effects of chemotherapeutic drugs. Oral complications are seen in 39% of the patients receiving chemotherapy and they are not always symptomatic and patients may have multiple episodes of the same. Before we discuss each of the complications in detail, I would like to shed some light on the Goldie Coldman hypothesis, which is similar to the drug resistance concept. Just like the microbes, cancer cells also develop resistance to a drug due to high mutation rates. No part of the human body reflects the complications of chemotherapy as visibly and vividly as the oral cavity. The four most common complications seen are oral mucositis, xerostomia, oral hemorrhage, and infections, which can be either fungal, viral, or bacterial. What exactly leads to these oral complications? To answer your question, they are usually dose related, they may be acute or chronic, they can be caused directly due to irreversible death of a tissue or indirectly due to several other causes. Now coming to the first oral complication, oral mucositis. Remember this mnemonic DUDE which stands for discoloration, ulceration and desquamation. Oral mucositis is associated with anti-metabolites and alkylating agents. The severity of this may be dose related and associated with the salivary concentration of a drug. In severe cases, patients find it difficult to maintain proper oral hygiene which may cause accumulation of debris and microbes and ultimately lead to secondary infections. An important clinical assessment tool during evaluation of a patient with oral mucositis is the OMI given by Lindquist et al. in 1978 and later on accepted by WHO. The second important tool is the oral mucositis rating score given by Schubert et al. in 1992. The next oral complication is xerostomia, also called as dryness of the mouth. This can be diagnosed by thorough history taking, intra and extra oral examination, measurement of the salivary flow and in some cases may require biopsy. The salivary flow rates can be measured with the help of one of the three methods and the saliva is collected after an overnight fasting and two hours after a meal. When comparing the two, the lesser evil is the chemotherapy-induced serostomia. It is less severe, it lasts for a shorter time, it goes away 5-6 to six weeks after the patient stops taking the drug and it is most commonly seen with plant alkaloids. Next up is oral hemorrhage or bleeding associated with the oral mucous membrane. This is seen when the patient's platelet counts fall below 60,000 per cubic millimeter and this condition is also called as thrombocytopenia. In this, the patient's microvascular integrity is compromised. So oral hemorrhage can take the form of petechiae, which are pinpoint red spots, 1 to 3 mm in size, echimosis which is similar to bruising or bleeding 
of the gums as well as ulcerations so the bleeding may be exacerbated by trauma which may be caused by physical injury due to toothbrush chemical injury due to mouth rinses thermal injury or bacterial injury by any microbe next up is oral infections the three main factors that contribute to patient susceptibility to infections are reduced leukocyte count or leukocytopenia leukocytes are the backbone of our immune system and help us fight infections when the leukocyte count falls below 1500 per cubic millimeter patient is unable to mount a proper antibody response the patient becomes immunosuppressive and is more susceptible to opportunistic infections the opportunistic infections are specifically seen in patients with weakened immune response so the microorganisms can gain portal of entry into the systemic vasculature especially when there is presence of ulcerations the microorganisms that are normally kept in check by our immune system end up becoming pathogenic and create an havoc host defense mechanism plays a very important role in resisting infections the most common bacterial infections seen are associated with gram negative bacilli the most common viral infection seen is oral herpes simplex and the most common fungal infection seen is candidiasis more specifically pseudomembranous and erythematous type and mucormycosis which is seen in patients with a history of diabetes as rightly said by benjamin franklin an ounce of prevention is much better than a pound of cure complete and thorough oral examination pre chemotherapy is important so that no oral lesion or condition goes unrecognized that could unnecessarily complicate the course of cancer treatment scaling root planing dental restorations and root canal treatments should be done beforehand surgical deprivement in case of periodontal conditions or extractions must be done 7 days prior to the start of chemotherapy to allow sufficient time for healing of the wounds prosthetic appliances must be checked properly and any inadequacies or defects must be fixed or a new prosthesis should be made before the patient begins chemotherapy Dentists should ask their patients to keep an alternative hygiene kit which consists of oral swabs, gauze pads and individual disposable oral swabs. Use of extra soft bristle toothbrush is recommended. Ask the patient to use dental floss more cautiously as improper use can cause abrasion and trauma. Alcohol based mouthwash should be avoided. Prior to rendering any dental treatment, ask the patient to get physician's consent, have a look at the blood count reports, refer the patient for transfusion, go through the relative risk assessment chart and pre-medicate the patient with antibiotics. Coming to the management of oral mucositis, first palliative treatment that is treatment given to manage any symptoms, analgesics are given, non-alcohol based mouth rinses are recommended. topical anesthetic such as benzocaine 0.2% can be given and in severe cases laser treatment or cryotherapy can be attempted now coming to the treatment of xerostomia or dry mouth the following things are recommended first is fluoride application second is toothpaste with osmoprotectant such as betaine patient can be asked to chew on xylitol based candies and use of ice chips drugs may be given or artificial salivary substitutes which are available in the form of sprays and gels salivary substitutes are seen as artificial saliva which are available over the counter and may contain one of the following ingredients coming to the management of oral hemorrhage platelet values below 25000 per cubic millimeter can be potentially fatal 
so monitoring of patient's platelet count is extremely important any potential cause of bleeding such as sharp edges of prosthesis and abrasive toothbrushing should be eliminated and modified always identify the site of bleeding to achieve hemostasis palliative treatment includes use of cold packs application of light pressure use of topical hemostatic agents and suturing is controversial as it can create additional sites Coming to the management of bacterial infections, antibiotic therapy can be very perplexing. So get a sensitivity or resistance testing done beforehand. Identification of the organism causing the infection is important. Granulocyte transfusion may be needed in some cases. Now coming to the treatment of viral infections. The gold standard for testing is polymerase chain reaction test. which is a revolutionary method developed by Dr Mullis in late 1980s antiviral drugs may also be useful and lanolin which is an emollient is used topically to relieve if topical antiviral gels are also available to be applied over the lesions daily every 2 hours until the lesion heals in case of presence of any active lesion elective dental treatment should be postponed because aerosolization of the virus is a serious problem that can put both the patient and the healthcare provider at risk now coming to the management of fungal infections for treatment of candidiasis the two most important drugs are nystatin and amphotericin b for mucormycosis it is a more fatal condition and may require more aggressive treatment modalities Dental management of a patient receiving chemotherapy is a serious undertaking because the standard of care has a direct impact on the patient's quality of life. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Do like and share and subscribe to the channel Dentistry Unfiltered.